everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Hi well, everybody, it's Joe. Welcome back here to Monday. It's the 18th of September, 2023. And there's still a lot of activity with the construction part of the site, but not a whole lot of production as we already know about. Uh, and that's gonna continue probably for another week, week and a half to the end of the month. Now, before I get into the, what I saw in the video today, I just wanna say congratulations to Tesla for hitting 5 million vehicles produced. Now, this was just uh, announced uh, about a day or so ago, and I just wanna say congratulations. I know it's been a ton of work, and the work that you're doing inside here at Giga Texas is only gonna make that uh, production number uh, to number six million much more quickly than uh, it has been in the past, and it's just going to continue to accelerate from there. One other thing that I want to talk about uh, briefly before we get into what we saw around the site is I want to just uh, recover what I talked about and we saw on my previous video just on the north end of the factory. On my 15 September video, I showed you all of these items in white plastic wrapping being delivered to the north end of the building and most of this was going into the plastics manufacturing section. Now, at the time, I wasn't sure what these were, but there are some clues that are written on the packaging and nearby as well. We'll start here. With the inset, you can see that this shows MDL HC85, which gives us a model number of what these items are. Now, we also have a clue in the form of the white trucks on the far left of the screen. These were all listed as Ingersoll Rand. So putting together the model number and the company, I was able to figure out what these items are. I'm going to the Ingersoll Rand website, and you can see the link at the bottom of the screen and in the video description. We learned that these are the model HC85 heat of compression desiccant dryers. There's an image that gives you an idea of what that looks like with the white wrapping off of them. And these HOC dryers recover heat that is natural byproduct of the compression process of air, and it offsets virtually all of the electricity cost other than operating the controller itself. This image on the bottom left gives you an idea of how the plumbing works, where inlet uh, heated air comes in and it goes through this process and outlet dry air comes out. Essentially, these systems ensure a high quality clean and dry air source is available for the manufacturing process. So now you know all of these items that we saw on the 15th of September, what they are and how they operate. So I hope that you found this discussion informative. All right, now back at the site, uh, a lot of activity on the west side with that uh, new end of line facility. You can see that more of the steel has been erected. They're also starting to do painting uh, of white on most of the steel columns and the beams. And I think that'll be the finishing touch on the inside once the roof and the walls are put in. So pretty nice to see. We also can tell just to the south of that facility that that grade work is continuing and they're expanding what will eventually be the new outbound lot. And as you can see by these images, just a lot of progress continues on that side of the highway. Now coming back over to the main site, uh, the only thing that I want to talk about uh, for right now is that I did see five cyber trucks today. Two of them are on the outbound lot, as you can see by these images here. And they do have the covers on them, but I think we know what they are. And uh, uh, there's also a Model Y next to them getting some sort of work in the uh, front before it is uh, transported off. But other than this, there's really not much in the outbound lot. Now over at the east side of the crash testing facility, we see three more cyber trucks. These are also under cover. Now just inside, they are continuing to work on that crash wall and some of the infrastructure to be able to do the crash testing. And it just makes me wonder if we're not gonna see these cyber trucks parked next to this facility used in crash testing at some point in the near future. But otherwise, a lot more to see in the video today, a lot more to talk about as usual. As always, thank you very much for your support. I do appreciate it. And uh, let's get into the video. Take care. Thank you to my Patreon members and ex-subscribers. Members and subscribers gain access to hundreds of high-resolution images, previews of future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga, Texas.
good morning from an ever-growing west side construction project. What we can see here is that graded area continues to grow and it looks like they're expanding what will eventually be the new outbound lot. And you can see the new end of line structure on the right hand side of the screen. And this gives you a really good overall view of how this continues to transform. Now the warehouse on wheels still has a lot of the trailers parked here. Uh, more so than what we'll see on the east side. So that's another interesting change. Uh, this may be part of moving all of the warehouse and wheels over to this side once all of the construction is completed. That central road continues to make progress. And we'll get a closer view of that large material staging location. And with the vehicles parked here in the contractor lot, that gives you a really good idea of just how much work is going on today. That new clearing location continues to have dirt removed and more of it being flattened out as well. And this is on the far southwest of this portion of the construction site. So it's uh, kind of interesting to see what's going to happen there. One of the other things we see is these yard trucks being loaded up with these green wrapped items. Many of these items are then being moved directly over into the General Assembly where that General Assembly lines two and three are continuing to be installed on the inside. Now it looks like production's paused again today and I would expect to see that for another week to 10 days based on uh, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing. This is very interesting. The TKS paint system that used to be on the east side has been moved over on this material staging yard now and it looks like more deliveries. Uh, the middle of the road we can see that uh, some of the concrete uh, curbs around the medians have already started being poured as well. So progress there. As we fly over the new outbound lot, this gives you a good sense of just how large it is. Still some steel being stored on the upper left, some other concrete items and some uh, trailers as well. But overall, you can get a good sense of the size of this outbound lot. It's gonna be at least three times, maybe four times larger than what they're currently using on the east side of the factory. Now on the south end, you can tell that almost all of the Trenching has been filled in. It looks like they're preparing among the footings the perimeter grade beam and putting some formwork in. Also preparing to start putting some of the moisture barrier down and also the rebar. So we should see concrete being poured there very soon. The steel structure itself continues to grow. You can also tell inside that they're painting much of it white. Eventually all of the steel will be painted white and then once the roof and the wall deckings are installed, the inside will be just a pretty much a large uh, open area with just white painted columns and beams and that should make for a pretty nice uh, environment inside once this building is completed. Also looks like there's some sort of, I don't know, shelving or racks being installed on this inset portion of the uh, structure as well. You can kind of see those rectangular items hanging from the uh, columns on that uh, section. Uh, but it'll be something to continue to watch and see what they do. Now at the bottom of the screen is more of that horizontal drilling and more of the HDPE pipe being fuse welded by that white item on the bottom right. And it looks like they've got some of the drilling already in place uh, proceeding underneath the highway over to that uh, part of the building. So we're going to cross over the highway. I'll resume the narration there and I'll show you where I think that this is actually coming out. And it's right here where the blue fencing is in place. You can tell where the trenching is now continuing through the parking lot across the road to this particular section. And this is where it'll continue where it's already been filled in and connect to the building here. And that will eventually provide uh, treated water and also it'll provide electrical power for that new end of line facility. The Main entrance continues to show progress with uh, installing some of the lighting elements on the beams and the columns with the stainless steel and that uh, stone glass uh, treatment, that black material has been completed on that trapezoid as well. We also see some more smaller scale trenching going across the road here to where this uh, landscaped section is. So another interesting uh, change and uh, some more construction that's going on here near the main entrance. Uh, but uh, we also note that a lot of the materials that have been stored here for the assembly line installation inside, it's starting to thin out. So it looks like more and more is being installed inside. And uh, that is a great indication. Again, I think it's going to be another week to 10 days. 
uh, just based on the work, but uh, they're getting close to the point where soon we'll start seeing maybe the employees coming back and production is getting ready to ramp back up again. But we'll continue to fly down to the south here along the west side of the building. I want to show you a very interesting delivery here next to this large platform. As I come in, I will zoom in, give you a good look, but uh, the label painted on the clear plastic says CT Zone X. And you can see that these are pre-assembled workstations that already have some of the robotic assemblers in uh, place. So basically they lift up this item, they'll move it in, and then they can install it directly into wherever it's going. But uh, anyway, another item for the Cybertruck getting ready to be moved inside and uh, continuing to build that production capability. So let's fly down to the south end and take a look at uh, what is going on on this portion of the site. I maneuver around to avoid some of the sunlight, we can see the more of the glass on the racks sitting here waiting to be moved over to temporary storage across the highway. Also more of the plumbing work in and around where that well system is located. And more of the yellow panels have been installed where the windows have been removed and it's getting ready to wrap around that corner of the building near where those platforms are located. The continuous flight auger pile drilling is underway again today. You can tell that it has now moved slightly further to the south and to the west from where it was two days ago. Also, the crews here have many more, at least a dozen more of these cylindrical rebar cages getting ready to be put into the bores that are being drilled. And nearby, or at least a little later in the time that I was flying, I noticed that the concrete trucks had arrived, so they were getting ready to start pouring more of the concrete into the bore so they can press those rebar cages down in to make those piles. Here's a good view of the entire south end as it uh, sits right now. And most of the pile work, again, you can see those cages on the left, but most of the pile work has been completed in this middle section and they're continuing to work towards the west side of this uh, entire area. We can tell that the enclosure, the temporary walls with these steel studs uh, for the stamping too continues. Uh, it just looks like one large section in the upper left to finish here on the south end. It looks like crews are pretty busy getting ready to install more of those wall panels. Another view of the south end on this side and more of these uh, rebar cages and some of the forms that will be used for the uh, column footings here in the bottom of the screen. Now there's a couple other things that I noticed from this vantage point. So we're gonna proceed over towards the southeast corner of the factory. First of all, you can tell that the large door next to the man lift has been opened up and above it, the windows uh, in that triangular section have been removed. It also looks like there's a large section of windows remaining to be removed and then another section with the blue panels. On the bottom left, you can see those pre-made frames. Those are replacing the windows once they are removed. We can also see these very large tanks have been delivered near these white painted items. At first, I thought these were the tanks that were northeast of the battery cathode plant, but as you'll see later in the video, these are not, these are new. Now, we can also see more deliveries happening here on the east side of stamping a lot more materials and we see in the upper part of the screen a lot more of the wooden crates have been uh, unloaded broken down and getting ready to be moved over to the recycling center so yet again showing a lot more equipment has been moved in and being installed inside as we proceed over towards the sedimentation basin that has some water in it we also see that uh, testing calibration lot is Virtually empty, there's only about five Model Ys in various stage of uh, construction sitting on that uh, top part of it. Uh, but also the uh, Rainmaker uh, here with, next to that blue tank next to the helicopter pad, it looks like it's just sort of sitting here waiting for whenever they resume operations or maybe this will be moved to a new location. And of course the wind tunnel as well. But overall that entire lot is empty today, which uh, is you know, indicating that that production is still in a paused state. The construction site here for the multi-level parking garage continues to develop. You can see the channels for water on the left and right in the center. Uh, some of that riprap in the middle that's kind of broken up uh, stone. We can see more of the 
earthwork being done for grading on the center bottom right of the screen. And then the other two areas here in the middle of the screen have had most of the grade work done. Uh, maybe that large rectangular section is waiting for some gravel mix to be brought in. But overall, this entire site is looking uh, like it's pretty much ready for construction to begin. More of the concrete pipes and some of the steel corrugated pipes being stored in the middle. And then here in this uh, ever-growing underground pipe section, uh, we can also see, in addition to the gravel on top of the pipes, we can see the kind of 90-degree bins being built in at this end of these three pipe segments. So it looks like another large section of underground stormwater pipe is being installed along this side, probably feeding into that other site where the multi-level parking garage will be. As I fly over the outbound lot, uh, there are a couple of trailers picking up vehicles today. So a few of them are Model Ys. We see another trailer getting ready to pick up most likely this Model Y with the front open. And there are two cyber trucks here in the outbound lot. Now these may be getting ready to be picked up as well. Uh, maybe with that Model Y. It's hard to tell for sure, but uh, it was good to see two more Cybertrucks here in the outbound lot. They were a total of five Cybertrucks that I saw today. There will be three more we'll see next to the crash test facility. But as I bring the drone up and pull away, this gives you a good location of where these Cybertrucks were today on the outbound lot. My intention here was to pull away to show you how the overflow lot looks for all the employee vehicles. And I noticed that there were two bridge cranes sitting here in that east warehouse on wheels. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that there's a lot less trailers here on the east warehouse on wheels site. And you can get a good sense of that right now. And they're using this as storage for these two bridge cranes. Now, these two, I believe, were delivered in last week. And we saw that in a couple of my videos. They were on the south end of the uh, factory in that uh, construction site. Looks like they've been moved over here temporarily until they're needed for installation. I think these are going to go into the casting machine structure, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. They look like the right size for that, um, but we'll continue to watch and see if we can find out where those go in. As I fly over the workshops and some of the uh, trailers and materials and vehicle storage location, we get a good look at the dye shop on the left and the cathode plant on the right. Looking down that alleyway where there's still a lot of work being done installing tanks and pipes and cabling in the conduit. We can also see what looks to be the beginnings of more paving and the south end of the dye shop. And also some of the work is pretty close to being able to start installing these window items. These are the framed items, some of them in blue. I wanted to get down low and get a look at this just to verify, and you can see the reflections in the uncovered section. So these are definitely windows, and these are going to be filling in that gap that you can see on the top right of the screen. As I fly along the west side towards the north, again, you get a good sense of the width of the berm and how that continues to encroach into the Martin Marietta batch plant on the left-hand side of the screen. We also get a good view here of uh, more of the work at this workshop to modify these steel pipe segments. Um, there's also some steel beams as well on the left-hand side of the screen, and uh, they continue to modify these before they are installed into whichever portion of the dye shop or the cathode plant that they are being uh, installed in. There's a good view of that north end of the cathode plant with that uh, what looks to be maybe a furnace under that covering. And again, the continued widening of the berm and how this area continues to become more and more rectangular in shape and more of the steel corrugated pipe waiting for installation, although there's actually less of it because more of it is uh, being installed, especially on the side of the cathode plant on this west side in those trenching. As I fly to the far northeast over the remaining portions of the sand and gravel mine, these hills and ponds, just wanted to give you a good sense of the work that is going on this far north of the battery cathode plant. The clearing onto the left is continuing to grow, and I'll give you some closer views of that uh, here in uh, just a little bit. But I also wanted to give you a good sense of this large uh, rectangular lot with all of the materials being stored, 
a lot of the debris from the vegetation and trees that have been brought down as well. And uh, just overall, how this section looks, uh, we're still waiting for construction to begin on that road and also that permitted North Logistics lot facility. And hopefully we'll see that at some point. This is the rental equipment lot, also where they do some of the maintenance on the rental equipment uh, that are used around Giga, Texas. You can also see the concrete segments here. These were cut up from the south end when they started the construction project to extend the building, and they were moved up near where this clearing is amongst the trees, but then they were relocated further to the north because all of these trees are being removed. Now, this is that area where the permit for a road will go through generally this location, kind of connecting to the housing unit on the east and State Highway 130 on the west. As I mentioned, this is a, another look at the clearing and how this uh, appears today. It looks like more clearing kind of happening just onto the left of the screen and uh, also some more dirt being piled in this particular section right now. The materials being stored on the northeast continue to be pretty much what we've seen in the past. And again, those are those two large tanks that earlier in the video I said I thought may have come from here, but as you can see, the ones that were brought in the south are newly delivered to that part of the facility, and these remain. As we get back towards the north end of the battery cathode plant, I'll bring the drone down and just give you a good view of this north end. You can tell that all the glass is installed, the receiving doors are in, it looks like they're preparing for the load leveler system, the rails around the uh, apron for the receiving doors, is uh, they're, they're all installed now as well. And uh, we can see those uh, concrete vaults for the lift station on the right and more of the trench work that is going on here, some of which is to install the steel corrugated pipes that'll go through this middle section and hopefully eventually will allow them to uh, get a good handle on all of this water that uh, tends to accumulate in this part of the facility. But the work on those underground stormwater pipes uh, continues. The chiller plant uh, continues to see a lot of activity on the north end. It looks like uh, those tests with the green adapters and those blue pipes and pumps continue. And also just uh, more work assembling uh, the upper platform area. Next to the northeast corner of the die shop, we see that work on this uh, new concrete uh, platform continues. And I'm wondering if we may not see those stainless steel tanks uh, like these two put on that section where they are constructing that slab. But we'll see as time goes on. It's a good view of the work that continues on that uh, second story of the chiller plant. All of the uh, vaporizers and nitrogen tanks and that installation with a manifold system. And then here, another tank with vaporizer system. That uh, concrete box strike structure has now been uh, completed. And I'm just waiting to see if they're going to build something on top of it or maybe put something inside, uh, maybe to contain spills or so. But something I'll continue to watch. You can also tell the outline of where the roads are here, where we will start seeing more of the asphalt work that is underway uh, just on that south side of the die shop. And then as I turn back towards the south end of the battery cathode plant, a couple things of note. We can tell that the top platforms around each of these hoppers or the cyclones, uh, depending on what you would like to call them, have been installed or they're finishing up the installation of that. And this gives you a really good idea how this will look. Looks like just one more of those semicircular platform items on the ground needs to be installed on that uh, hopper nearest to the building. But this gives you a really good idea of how this is going to look when it is completed. And uh, once this uh, work is done, I would expect to see these moved up into that large open section on the south end of the building. But here's I zoom back out, gives you a good view of how that south end looks. More of the materials near that east wall of the cathode plant. And then here, some developments around the crash test facility. The equipment room looks like it's completed. The uh, cable trench looks like it's pretty much completed as well, concreted in. And then looking inside, you can see that uh, that uh, kind of that steel structure inside has already got some of the lights mounted, kind of those green items, maybe some more of the sensors. The crash wall has been installed as well. And it looks like just preparations to get this uh, facility ready for operation. And speaking of which, we can see there are three of the Cybertrucks under covers on this side of the facility. 
And there's also some other Model Ys and Model Xs, all of which appear to be most likely crash test vehicles. There's also a Ma Model X under that north structure. Looks like it's prepared maybe for the first crash testing. The Wade Pit is still uh, kind of empty, not a lot of activity there today. And then at the stormwater pipe outlet, we can see some of that preparation work for concrete for that outflow channel. So let's fly up over the Martin Marietta batch plant and we'll resume the narration at the electrical switch yard. Here on the north end, we get a good view of the trenching work near these three steel poles. This is the northernmost uh, connection point for the north part of the Megapack system. And all along the tree line, you can see the uh, conduit trenching that extends over to that Megapack site. And this is where it's going to connect onto these uh, steel poles and uh, will probably be part of how power flows into or out of the Megapack system back to the grid. As we continue to fly to the south, uh, we can get a good sense of the temporary switchyard on the left, which is still functional, and the new switchyard on the right. And half of this is now energized with one of the transformers uh, operational now, and I'll give you some good views of that shortly. The underground vault looks like it's almost completed. Uh, you can see the two uh, trailers for the control room. And it looks like uh, almost all of the trenching has been filled in now, both uh, between the trailers and the fence and on the other side as well. And as I mentioned, uh, you can tell that the closest transformer, the disconnects on the right-hand side of the screen at the bottom are open. And then the other transformer, the disconnects on the center top of the screen, they are all closed. So that part of the system or half of the electrical switchyard is energized, providing power to the factory now. As I fly up over the power lines, I'm giving you a good view of this north end trench work. We saw the concrete being poured here on my previous video. It looks like all of it's poured and now pretty much uh, curing. This is what's uh, securing those three large radius conduits that uh, extend up and connect into this steel structure. It appears that this uh, a worker is installing some of the top parts of this pole. Uh, could be part for uh, lightning arresters. We may see something similar on all four of the poles. As we come down and I uh, spin the drone around a little to give you a good view of the Megapacks, what I'm trying to show you here is that virtually all of the wiring now has been completed. There's just a few transformers left that need the wiring installed. And this is uh, part of the last major uh, construction that needs to be done before the Megapacks can be tested and energized. So it's, that's coming up pretty close. And the last thing I wanna show you here uh, before we cross over Tesla Road is this trench work with more conduit in this particular area. It looks like it goes down to Tesla Road, takes a 90 degree turn, and it's going to follow along Tesla Road towards the east. So as we uh, cross over Tesla Road itself, we can see that uh, there continues to be work here in this small parking lot with some of those open vaults and conduit, and they connect into these open vaults and conduit as well. More materials still being arrayed on this larger berm and work on the conduits on that left-hand side where the berm's been widened. As I zoom in, I'm showing you that those uh, anchor blocks for the kilns have all been moved inside, pretty much all of the rest of the material we can see uh, some steel structures just inside the doors and that uh, large white wrapped item remains as well. These crates have uh, some of the Cybertruck castings and other suspension parts inside and just waiting on this part of the uh, factory until they are needed. And then as we continue to fly to take a look at the north end of the building, a couple things of note, the firewater loop in that uh, ringed area with those white dividers. Looks like it's pretty much done waiting for the uh, concrete to be poured. On the left hand side we saw some rack mounts for body units being uh, that have just been recently delivered. 
We also see these large crates for the 41, 4680 battery cell production getting ready to be moved inside. And it looks like uh, maybe one or two of these crates have already been moved in uh, from my previous video, but uh, work continues. And also, if you look underneath that taller platform, some more of the windows have been removed on this end of the building as well in kind of that triangular window shape. So again, work continues to expand production capabilities within the factory and a lot of construction going on outside all over the site as well. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you found what we discussed inform informative and as always, take care.